Hi guys, my name is Lindsay and welcome to the art making part of the Everhart Museum's workshop. Today we're going to talk about collage and about using the 10 elements found in Henry Niese's painting, Table and Rug. So the 10 elements in his painting are, there's a floor, there's a rug, there's a table, there's three pots, there's a fork, there's a spoon, there's a knife, and there's a salt shaker. So what is a visual element? When you look at a painting or a sculpture or a drawing or a print, look at the different parts or elements in the artwork. Is there a line? Is there a pattern? Is there texture? Is there color? Is there shape or form? Is there tone? Is there a mood in the artwork? Look at Nisa's painting. How important do you think line is in this painting? Is there a line going around every single object? Line's pretty important in this painting. What about pattern? Is there a pattern in that rug? Is there a pattern in that floor? So pattern is another visual element found in most artworks. What about texture? Is that floor smooth or rough? What do you think? Is that table old or new? What do you think? And is there a texture on that rug? So texture is another important visual element in Nisa's painting. What about color? Do you think he loved color? What do you think? I think he loved color. There's a lot of color in this painting and the color definitely sets a mood for the entire artwork. What about form? Is form a visual element in any work? Look at, look at the shapes of that table. Look at the shapes of those pots. Look at the shape of that rug. All of the objects have a shape, and shape is, I think, really important in this painting. So when all these elements come together, when the line and the pattern and the texture and the color and the forms come together and they work, they work together, they create a mood or a tone for the piece, and the tone for this painting is beautiful. This hangs in the Everhart Museum. You, when it, you really need to see it because it is a beautiful, beautiful painting. So I think it'll be fun to see how all of you use the same 10 elements in your collages to express yourselves because they will all be very, very different. Now to make the collage, you're gonna to want to make kind of a, a base foundation um, background or plate for your cutout pieces. So I made a couple of different backgrounds. This one is more vertical. This one is more horizontal, but they're nice and thick, so they would accept, you know, cut out images pretty well. You can either print the images, the 10 elements, off from the um, website, and I have them all on the website, reduced to line art. You can also draw them by hand. That's fine. You can make your own table uh, and floor and rug. is totally up to you. You can cut out images of those 10 objects from magazines. That would be an awesome collage. You can also use pattern papers to give your collage texture and pattern and color. It is totally up to you. This is your collage, your call. You will need some paper either for printing or for cutting out the 10 objects and gluing them down onto your background. You'll probably need some pencils or a pencil, black magic marker. You will definitely need a pair of scissors and you will need some sort of adhesive. So I love tape. You can use a glue stick or you can use glue. And to color your collage, you can either use crayons, you can use paint, whatever you have at home. You can use markers, you can use colored pencils. Whatever you have is fine. The whole point is to see how you guys express yourselves with the same 10 basic visual elements. Now we're gonna go over to the easel and I'm gonna show you what I did with those same 10 elements. So this is what I did. I took the floor, I took the rug, I made the rug into a full rug, and I put the rug on top of the floor. I added two windows and a door at the back wall with some more detail on the walls. I added logs on the back wall so it was basically a log cabin. I took the table, I made it into a full table, 
So now I have a floor, a rug, and a table. I can cross these three elements off my list. I added chairs and a counter and a sink, but I, I'm wondering who's, who lives in this house? So I thought about it and I made the family into a bunny family because I love bunnies. So now we have six bunnies, but we still need to add three pots, a fork, a spoon, a knife, and a salt shaker. I added two plates. I added pots. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have nine pots. We have a fork, a spoon, a knife, and a salt shaker. So now I can cross off all the elements, the 10 elements that I needed to use from Nisa's painting. But we needed color, so I colorized the floor, the back wall, and I put corn pudding in all of the pots. I made the bunnies a very pale tint of gray. I added red to the table, the door, the window ledges, and some of the pots, and the rug now is turquoise and yellow. I added uh, turquoise to the pots, more detail on the rug. I added green to the outside. So now we are in the woods, look, watching a bunny family having a party. And since that's a cake, that's a birthday cake, there's, it's somebody's birthday. But on number seven of the step-by-step, -step, I ask you to add five more details to your collage. So I thought I'd better add some details. I added a bunny looking in the window. I added more bunnies. I added two more rugs. I added a candle. So now we're almost there. We're almost ready. We're almost done with the illustration. But whose party is it? Who's the birthday bunny? The birthday bunny is, can you guess? The older brother sitting at the table with the crown. So here is Nisa's painting. Here is my illustration using the same 10 elements that we found in Henry Nisa's painting. It would be awesome if you could send us pictures of your collages to see what you made with those same 10 visual elements. So send photos and see you soon.